Here is a question type that I'm seeing coming up more and more frequently on the GRE and GMAP. And it's about how many shapes can fill a larger 3D shape. Take a question like this. You see a larger box here or container. It measures 12 meters by seven meters by five meters. And then the question is how many boxes measuring two by two by two can fully fit inside the container? Now, if you want to pause the video and see how you would answer this. Before I get to my shortcut, let's talk about the one way not to do it. What at least half of my students would do is multiply 12 by seven by five. And what is that? I think that's 420. And then divide by two times two times two, which is eight. So 420 divided by eight. That's the volume of the container divided by the volume of the box. That actually gives you, I think, 52.5. And so the students would pick D that we can fit 52 boxes. Now that's wrong, but why is it wrong? It's wrong because you're treating it like a liquid where somehow little remainders of a box can sort of flow neatly into the remaining gaps inside the container. Like somehow we could cut off the corners of a box and then break it down and fit it in completely so the entire container was fully filled up. But we're dealing with solid 3D shapes here, not liquids. Yes, if this was a liquid question, that would be correct. But we're dealing with physical solid boxes that can't be chopped up. So what's the correct way of answering this question? The correct way is to look dimension by dimension at how many boxes can fit in. What do I mean by that? Let's take the first dimension, the width. That's 12 meters. Now, hopefully it makes sense to you that if our box measures two by two by two, we could fit six of those boxes in that dimension. And if you can't visualize that, let me show you. One, two, three, four, five, six boxes, each measuring two meters could fit inside that 12 meter width. In other words, 12 divided by two is six. So we get six boxes going width wise. Now let's look at another dimension, say the height, that's seven meters. Again, we have dimensions of two and two left over. So it's not gonna fit perfectly this time. Seven divided by two is 3.5, but we can't have half a box. That would be as if it was a liquid. So instead we can only fit three boxes. Again, visually, if you want to see what it looks like, one, two, three boxes could fit in height wise. By the way, if my voice is a little bit croaky, it's because I had COVID recently, but I'm, I'm mostly recovered. And so I really wanted to get this video done to teach you this method. Anyway, we can only fit three boxes height wise, not three and a half. What about the last dimension, the depth of five meters? Five divided by two is 2.5. So we could only fit two boxes going that dimension. What does this tell us? If we can fit six boxes width wise, three boxes height wise, and two boxes depth wise. Well, we can fit six by three by two boxes. Six times three times two is 36 boxes. So that's how many boxes we can fit given that they're solid shapes that we can't cut up. Notice it's much smaller than the 52 that some people might have thought we could fit. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. The questions aren't always this straightforward. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. How can they make it harder? They can make it harder by having dimensions where you have to choose which dimension to use. Take this next question. Container A measures 15 foot by 11 foot by 56 foot. Package B measures seven foot by two foot by three foot, as you can see. What is the maximum number of packages of the same size and with the same dimensions of package B that can fully fit within container A. Now, some students who have paused the video and attempted this wouldn't get it right, even with the benefit of the last method, if they don't choose the dimensions carefully. Imagine if they just kept the boxes in the same orientation and said 15 divided by seven, 11 divided by two, and 56 divided by three, just because that's the order in which the dimensions come for each box. You don't have to stick with the same order. The 15 could be divided by the two, or the seven, or the three. You don't have to just keep to the order that they gave you the dimensions in. And if you don't believe me, look, if I place the box this way, then the seven foot dimension, the width dimension, is now gonna to correspond to the height dimension of the larger container, the 56. And why might we do that? We do that because as I've written down below, we're picking the dimension with the least remainder each time. So you see that 15 foot at the bottom. We don't divide it by the seven because that leaves us a remainder of one. 
15 divided by 7 is 2 remainder 1. We divide it by the 3 because there's no remainder when you do 15 divided by 3. So how many fit in if we do 15 divided by 3? That's 5. 5 exactly. So 5 packages exactly would fit. Now let's focus on the 56 foot dimension. Now many of you would put your hands up and say, but Philip, that could be divided by the 2 or the 7. Okay, we can't focus on the 3 because we've used that up. But it could be divided by the 2 or the 7. And you're right. But let's plan out ahead. If we divide it by 2, yes, that will fit perfectly. But that will leave the 11 foot dimension being divided by the 7 foot dimension. And that has a pretty big remainder of 4. Whereas if we do the 56 foot divided by the 7 foot dimension, that again fits perfectly. But this time the 2 foot dimension would be left over with the 11 foot dimension. And that leaves a remainder of 1. 11 divided by 2 has a remainder of 1. So we're always picking the dimensions with the least remainder. If this seems complicated, watch how I do it in this question, and then you'll have one final question to practice yourself. So I'm going to divide the 56 foot by the 7 foot dimension, as displayed with the vertical box there. 56 divided by 7 is 8, so we can fit 8 packages height-wise. And finally, the 11 foot dimension, the depth dimension, we divide it by 2, which is the last remaining dimension of the package B. And 11 divided by 2 is 5.5, so we can only fit 5 that way. Remember, we can't cut up the boxes. What's the final answer? 5 times 8 times 5, which is 200. So the answer is 200 packages. Notice, and you can try this out yourself, if you try it with dimensions that give you bigger remainders, imagine we did the 15 divided by the 7, I don't know, the 11 divided by 3, 56 divided by 2, you get much smaller answers because you're not organizing it efficiently. But of course, you'd get a much bigger answer if you just got the volume 15 times 11 times 56 and divided it by the volume of B, 2 times 7 times 3. But as we agreed in the previous question, we can't do that because it's not liquid. Okay, now you can see what I'm talking about. I want you to, if you haven't before, really practice this last question on your own. This time, I'm not even going to give you a diagram to help. And see if you can pick the dimensions that give you the smallest remainders and therefore the maximum way you can fill that bigger 3D shape. Pause the video and see how you get on. Okay, so we're trying to fit parcel Y into crate X. What dimension shall we start with? Well, the obvious one to start with would be the 10 centimeter dimension. Why? Because it divides perfectly by the five centimeter one. That's the only one where we fit perfectly. So it makes sense that we use that dimension to divide by the five centimeter dimension. Notice I'm not even giving it the names, width, height, depth, because it doesn't really matter what we call it. Just the 10 centimeter dimension, we're gonna divide by the five centimeter dimension because it fits perfectly with zero remainder. So in that dimension, 10 divided by five is two. I don't know why I wrote equals five because it equals two parcels. I got it right the second time. 10 divided by five is two parcels. But now we have a choice. The 16 doesn't divide by the six or the three. And the 14 dimension, which we've got left, also doesn't divide by the 6 or the 3. So what do we do? Well, let's think about the two scenarios we've got. We could either divide the 16 by the 6 and the 14 by the 3, or we divide the 16 by the 3 and the 14 by the 6. Which way round shall we do it? Well, think about the remainders you would get in each scenario. If we did the 16 divided by 3, we'd get a remainder of 1. 16 divided by 3 is 5 remainder 1. If we did the 14 by the 6, we get a remainder of 2. 14 divided by 6, you get 12 remainder 2. So those are the two remainders, 1 and 2. But if we did it the other way around, where the 16 is divided by the 6 and the 14 is divided by the 3, we get remainders of 4 and 2 respectively. Much bigger remainders. And as I've written down below, we're always picking the dimension with the least remainder. So we do it the first way around. The 16 divided by the 3 and the 14 divided by the 6. And at the end, I'll show you how doing it the wrong way around with the bigger remainders leads to a much more inefficient solution. So if we did it the correct way with the least remainders, 16 divided by 3 is 5.3 recurring, so we can fit 5 parcels. And 14 divided by 6 is 2.3 recurring, so we can fit 2 parcels in that dimension. And of course, as before, we multiply the different answers. 2 times 5 times 2 is 20 parcels. I want to quickly demonstrate something. Let's imagine we picked it the wrong way around, where we had the higher remainders. So we do the 16 divided by the 6 and the 14 divided by 3. 16 divided by 6 goes in twice. 14 divided by 3 goes in four times. So we have 2 and 4 as the answers. 2 times 4 times 2 for the 10 centimeter dimension 
2 times 4 times 2 is 16. So we'd have only fitted in 16 parcels into the crate. Whereas doing it the correct way around with the least remainder, we can fit in 20 parcels, a much better outcome. It's almost like I'm teaching you supply and logistics here as if we're managing a port or something. But either way, it's a cool skill and it can definitely come up in a GRE and GMAT. So I hope you've learned the trick and enjoyed it. Have a great day.